Thank you so much for calling. I'm really excited to ask you these questions and um, just to get a little bit more of an idea of what working out the kinks is all about and a little bit about you as a person as well. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I watched the series, so I kind of know what's up. But for those who have not watched, please tell us what Working Out the Kinks is all about. Sure, okay. So Working Out the Kinks is a comedy about black women and their hair and how it affects all aspects of our lives and how it's, how it's our hair is different from other non-black hair. So the main character, Jada, a naturalista, played by me, mm -hmm. <laughs> lives, <laughs> lives in a four-bedroom apartment in Harlem with her close friends slash roommates. And one of the roommates is moving out, so they have to get a new roommate. And so she ends up being a rural, culturally naive white girl from Ohio. Mm -hmm. So things start to get a little tangled in the apartment as cultures clash and culture shock hits on both sides. So Jade is in the middle trying to work out the kinks with the roommates in her apartment. Meanwhile, outside of the apartment, she's trying to work out the kinks in her career and in her love life and, of course, in her with her hair. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so why exactly do you feel like a series like this, like working out the kinks was necessary, especially like now and in this day and age? Sure. Well, first of all, I feel like it's always important to tell our stories. And this is definitely one of them. It's important for others to see our stories. And it's important for us to see our stories and identify with them and laugh at ourselves. Um, sometimes, you know, it, it feels good. It's therapeutic and it's empowering. And hair is such a huge part of our lives as black women. I mean, I know this not just because I live it, but also in, in coming up with the concept of the show, I noticed that whenever black women get together for whatever reason we're getting together in some way and somehow hair comes up, even if it's just a brief, oh, girl, your hair is cute. And we move <laughs> on. Um, somehow hair comes up and usually it's more than just, an, oh, girl, your hair is cute. Usually a conversation about hair ensues in some form or fashion. So I noticed this, but also realized that there was no show, well, and definitely not a scripted show that centered around hair other than Chris Rock's Good Hair, Bad Hair movie documentary. So I felt this was one of our stories that was important to tell. Then after making the show and showing it to not only black audiences, but also showing it to non-black audiences, I realized that I was achieving my goal of not only being entertaining, but being educational too. Uh, because on more than one occasion, has a white woman come up to us after seeing the show and say something to the effect of, wow, I never knew why black women looked at me funny when I would try to touch their hair, but now I see, now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's very and, true. Right? And, and our one white actress on the show herself, she's just gotten a whole education. She, like, she asks questions during every shoot. Mm -hmm. Like, now, what, now what's a hot comb? <laughs> now, what's what's tender headed mean and so what so a perm for you guys means straight right and etc just questions like that every time she comes on set which i love because it's like okay good like you're not being shy about it you're not trying to pretend you're not trying to fake the funk you're not shying away from it you're embracing and owning the fact that you don't know these things and you're being educated and vice versa we ask her questions about her background too like uh so south dakota you live with cows what's going on there like you know <laughs> yes <laughs> And then finally, I would say bringing awareness. Like, I'm so glad right now you said in this day and age, I'm so glad that these hair discrimination laws are now finally starting to come into play. You know, mm -hmm. New York just passed one. Uh, uh, California just passed one. And bringing awareness to hair discrimination and microaggressions made to people based upon the way their natural hair looks. And so this show helps to bring awareness to things like that as well. But at, and at the same time, it's bringing a lightness to it because I think laughter is healing and so necessary, you know, in general. But particularly in this day and age when we're dealing with so much tension and toxicity in today's social and political climates. That makes so much sense. But there is like a specific part um, of the of your answer that I actually goes into my next question. So I, it's very interesting to learn that the one white girl on the show for the most part, you said that she actually didn't know some of the things 
that were um that was stated on the show so it's kind of like she was acting but it was also like some of the things were actually factual yeah yeah absolutely so there's this one episode, once I saw it, I was like, I definitely have to ask this question. So okay. it's kind of like a handful, but I'll just <laughs> try to like kind of um, compress it. So in episode seven of season one, mm-hmm. Madison brings up a really good point. And she basically asks Jay to you, um, how is it that you still consider yourself all natural if it takes many products for your hair to look natural? TWA? Teeny weeny afro. That's what's gonna happen if this product washes out and my hair dries. But how is your hair all natural? Oh, wow. If it takes all those products to make it look natural. She's right. Oh, oh, that's a lot. So it's not your hair didn't do that. Right, it didn't do on that. On its own. Ooh. Work, 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 working out. No, it's not. It's yeah. not. It's just making it. It's enhancing the natural curl. I'm so glad I got my prize curl. Look, it's my hair. It's my hair. Yeah. It's but it's natural. No. Ish. And I've heard people say this before. I've also heard people say, oh, well, you're not considered natural if your hair is bleached or dyed. You're not considered natural if your hair is permed or relaxed. And I've even also heard like a beauty guru on YouTube say the opposite. She was like, everyone's considered natural because the hair, the, the hair that grows out of your scalp is not chemically relaxed. It's not, it's not dyed. So don't you think everyone's considered natural? And I was just like... Oh, I don't know. But when that came up on the episode, I was like, I definitely want to um, get your views and opinions on that. Right, right. It's, it's so funny you say that because that's the point of that episode. And that question at the end of the episode is to provoke to provoke thought on that in conversation. So, we, you know, we left it open ended purposely because we wanted the audience to answer that. We wanted to get be- feedback from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when I say you, I mean the audience uh, and on how you would answer that. And I've heard many interesting answers. So I want to keep it open ended. But I, so I, what I will do, though, is I'll tell you some of the most interesting answers that I've heard. OK. <laughs> um, so one woman said, well, my hair is natural because the products that I put in my hair are all natural. Mm-hmm. So that means my hair is all natural. And then another woman's response to that was, well, what if the products I put in my hair are all natural? What if there are chemicals in my products? Does that mean my hair isn't natural? Mm-hmm. Um, and then another woman's response to this was, to that was that natural refers to virgin hair, meaning hair where the texture has never been manipulated. So if you have ever straightened your hair, then you no longer have virgin hair. Wow. And technically, you are no longer truly, truly natural. And most people have straightened or altered the texture of their hair in some way at some point. So according to her, most people don't have virgin hair and aren't true naturals. Another person uh, answer would would be that it refers to the texture. So if you have a natural texture of hair, then you are natural. And then the if you Google the term, that it says that it's referring to the texture. But if you're so it, if your hair is your natural texture, then you're natural. But if you are so if you are dyed or anything like that uh, with chemicals but your hair is still a natural texture, then you are natural. So those are just some of the answers I've heard on red. Mm-hmm. That is so crazy. It's I've heard the same thing too. That's why I was like, I definitely have to ask you. I feel as though this is kind of like a a universal topic because everyone has their own opinion. Everyone has their own beliefs. But I also feel like at the same time, a lot of people would say it's just hair. Like we, we're. Gonna, <laughs> you, I know you've heard that before. So many uh-huh, people be like, uh-huh. Oh my God, you cut it all off, and then the person will answer, Well, it's just hair. It's gonna grow back. It's not gonna be right. like this forever. So that's really interesting that there's been so much talk about this. That was- but, and, and the thing is, and the reason why this is the show that I chose is because 
you're right. It is just, people will say that it is just hair. However, I think people fail to realize how important our hair is to us as African American women. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it has become so important to us, like to the point where, you know, we call it our crown. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You, and, 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 and that, that's also part of the show is just showing how our hair in particular affects so many different aspects of our lives that affect, you know, it because it takes so much to take care of it, uh, you know, differently than other cultures. It, it you know, it's, it's a whole day. At the beauty shop. We haven't, we haven't done an episode about this yet, but I, I need to put it in season two. You know, it's a whole cultural thing. We go to the, whether it's men or women, even at the barbershop, it's like a whole day situation. You go and it's like, that is part of, you know, bonding with the people in your neighborhood <laughs> and, you know, it becomes therapy because you're talking to your hairstylist while you're getting your hair done. And it also becomes part of um, self-care day because you're getting pampered. You're basically pampering yourself. Right. And yeah. you know what I mean? It also affects like, OK, I'm going to um, this job interview today. How am I going to wear my hair? Uh, you know, because as we talked about with the hair discrimination laws, like people really do perceive you differently depending on how you wear your hair. And so it's just. Even though it is quote unquote just hair, it, it for us it's more than just hair. It's part of our identity. It really is because if you think about it, for Black women, we step out the house a whole different way if our hair looks one way than we do if we step out the house and our hair looks a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? we step out the house different. We feel different if we wear and we walk and we step different if we have our hair wrap, our Nubian hair wrap on. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We step out the house different if we have our hair laid, if it's pressed and curled. We step out the hair different if we have our hair free flowing in the curls or blowing in the wind. You know what I'm saying? It's a different flow each time depending on how our hair and how we feel about ourselves. That's very, very, very true. <laughs> I also feel like we're like the like you just said we are seriously the only culture where our hair is considered a big deal because other cultures other races they don't really care that much they don't worry that much with us right. it's a big deal and we're like always so proud to talk about it or right. like we're so willing to like teach people when they get something wrong right right <laughs> aside from Jada being the naturalista, there are some um, parts of the show that I would say that kind of speaks on self-discovery. Because we kind of see, like you mentioned earlier, Jada seems to be trying to figure herself out. She also is just going through the strokes, just like everyone else in the house, too, is trying to figure themselves out and going through, I guess, adulting. You know, so what uh -huh. advice do you have for young women, especially young women of color when it comes to self-discovery, adulting or just trying to figure things out? Right. It, so, first of all, it absolutely is about self-discovery and self-actualization as well. I'm so glad you picked up on that. Uh, my advice would be to get some guidance, mm -hmm. ideally a coach. Um, I, I was Jada in a lot of ways. Uh but the best thing I ever did for myself was to get a life coach and things just started changing dramatically in my life. I just started manifesting things all over the place and growing as a person. Um, but even if you don't get a coach, find some sort of guidance, maybe in the form of a mentor or a spiritual counselor or, or even a role model. Even if you don't talk, even if it's somebody that you can't actually physically talk to, but a role model that you study and that has the things that you want to achieve, you know, they, they have the kind of uh, presence and the, um, the, maybe they carry themselves in a way you want to carry yourself. They have, they've achieved the goals that you want to achieve. You know, you can identify with them because you see th things that are similar to you in them and you want to just grow and be more like them. You can have a role model that you study and find out how they've achieved what you want and follow in their footsteps, you know, study that. So no one, and I mean, no one that I've ever heard of has achieved great, great, great success without a great team around them, which includes a coach or a mentor, if not more than one coach or mentor and role model. That's very true. I just got some advice myself, too. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can see what you're saying. And I feel like especially now, a lot of people are encouraging that um, young women or even just young adults speak to people about what they're going through, find mentors and role models, like you just said. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> So uh, when it comes to um, being an actress, 
you stress in the show how difficult it is um, for an actress with natural hair, how it is trying to get casted. Is that something that you would say you still face frequently, even to this day? Okay, so thank you for asking that question. So, no, okay. I don't tend to have this issue personally. Mm-hmm. That aspect of the show is based off of mostly seeing on TV and movies Mm -hmm. that the women in the shows, particularly the leads, tended to have straight hair. Okay. And yes, that is still a thing that the industry is dealing with. Mm -hmm. Now, we are definitely seeing a shift for sure. You know, more and more women are showing up on the big and small screen and natural looking or natural hair or textured hair, that's for sure. And and so that, but it is still a thing that is, you know, predominant. Um, and so the writing of the episodes that deal with that and working out the kinks came more from me uh, seeing that and also hearing stories of friends of mine that have dealt with that. Okay. Now, uh, going back to me, I think that I haven't really dealt with that because I mostly act in theater mm-hmm. versus TV and film. Although I'm working to change that. Okay. I'm do more TV and film just as <laughs> I want to do just as much TV and film as I do theater. Okay. I really do. Um, but anyway, in theater, you are almost always wigged. So they don't really care in the audition room about whether your hair is natural or not. Okay. Now, with that being said, what I have noticed even in theater are the wigs that they put on people. Mm-hmm. So it seems that with the black girls, if you are the lead, then you will have a relaxed wig. Or at least your wig will be more relaxed than the other black girls in the show if if there are any other black girls in the show. Okay. So in a sense, it's kind of still... A work in progress, in theater yeah, at least. for sure. All right, and for um, Working Out the Kinks, do you see yourself expanding? I know you just mentioned season two, and I also did read something about season two. So mm-hmm. do you do you have, like, an expected date, or no, not yet? We don't have an expected date yet, but we are absolutely working on the next season, and um, we're also definitely working on partnerships right now as we speak. Yes. And things, let me just, I can't really say anything, but I can, what I can say is things are looking really good on that end. Okay. Um, and ultimately, I would love to see Working Out the Kinks on like a OWN or a Netflix or a BET or a HBO or a similar platform. And I have a great team that's helping me to get it out there to larger platforms. So I'm super excited about that. Wow, you just literally answered my next question. And I'm not even going to lie, I'm sitting here smiling because I'm like, oh, okay, (laughs) Netflix, HBO, I'm super excited. And I'm going to, and I'm telling you right now, I'm literally like, once everyone gets put on, I'm going to be like, well, I started watching it first. Ah, with yes, no issue yes. i'm gonna be like I, I was been on it i was watching it on youtube you're just now catching up on netflix catch up <laughs> right 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 yes ma'am i'm so excited so that's really really Thank good this you. is all good news the last question it kind of mm-hmm. goes into what I, you just answered too but is there anything else that's coming up i know like 2019 ha- is like really ending and 2020 is right around the corner do you have like any exciting projects coming up maybe yeah so of course like i said we're working on the next season of working out the kinks Mm -hmm. and then also um an executive producer on a feature film coming out soon it's called lola it's by antoine allen and it is the first african-american female boxer movie and it's starring taja b simpson of uh, she was in Tyler Perry's Boo 2, and she's in his new series called The Oval. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's coming out soon. And finally, uh, I also coach people transitioning or wanting to transition into the arts as a second career. So I coach you into getting your first gig as a professional actor or singer or dancer. So, you know, working with my clients and gaining new clients is also very exciting for me as well. Wow, this is all great stuff. Your 2020 is looking really bright. Yes, ma'am. 